Well, something doesn't look right here. Oh, hello everyone, welcome to this special pickups video. Remember the 10 amazing games I imported from Taiwan a year ago? This winter, I decided to do it again, but this time I got twice as many with over 20 games. Since most of these games are not physically available in the US market, you probably haven't heard some of them yet. And that's not all. We will also check out some additional gifts from the store. But here is the bummer. While going through these games, I found something that's not quite right. I will address it later in the video because this is something every gamer should be aware of it. Especially if you are considering importing games from overseas. This time I pretty much bought all the games from one store, except for one I got from the mall. That one is like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name for PS4. This game came out last November, and there is no physical release in North America in case you are wondering. PS5 copies were everywhere, but finding a PS4 copy was tricky just a month after it dropped. I managed to snag one at the mall, but they charged me full price without any discounts. Had to accept whatever they asked for the free PS5 upgrade. I've already finished this game on Xbox because of Game Pass. This game is enjoyable and I had a great time exploring Osaka. In terms of trophies and achievements, this game is considered easy compared to other Yakuza games. Still, there are a few tough fights that might give players some trouble even on the lowest difficulty. Overall, it's still manageable. Here is the first special goodies I received. While shopping in the mall during the holiday season, they gave me this Super Mario gift bag. It looks pretty nice, right? Definitely a cool addition to my Mario collection. When I found out the man who erased his name is not physically available in North America, I was shocked. I don't understand why they made such a decision in the first place. Later, I found out there are many games that skip a physical release in North America. Now, let's talk about another game. Atalia Marie Remake, which is the remake of the very first Atalia game. This game caught my attention from the moment it was announced. I was eagerly waiting for the physical release in North America, only to find out there would be none here. I immediately looked to import it myself, and luckily a PS4 copy is still easy to find in Taiwan. However, it was a bit pricey. Although I didn't play the original game, I knew Marie from Nelka and the Legendary Alchemists. I'm definitely looking forward to playing this game. I always thought the Colonial Fantasy Reverie series had already received a physical release in North America. However, I recently discovered that it hasn't and will not in the future. This means it's time to import. This collection includes two remastered Colonial games, both 1 and 2. The franchise gained a lot of popularity from the late 90s to the early 2000s. If you were like me and didn't get a chance to experience the franchise before, now is another chance to get into it. It seems like there are additional goodies in this launch edition. If it's a DLC code, it might have already expired. Next up is River City Saga Three Kingdoms. I was actually looking to import this game last year, but no luck. I checked a couple of different stores, they were all sold out. Therefore, I didn't expect to see it in store this time. The game is based on the famous romance of the Three Kingdoms, which is basically the same background as Dynasty Warriors. We have got more PS4 games coming up, but let's take a break and check out the PS5 games I got this time. First up is The Legend of Tendin. I was supposed to grab this game last year, but they pushed back the release date, so I missed out. I think a limit around their physical release in the US, but honestly, their releases are almost like having no physical release at all. Unless it's available at major retailers, I'm not going to pay those rip off prices. The Legend of Tendin is kind of like the Taiwanese Robin Hood. A story we all grew up hearing about in Taiwan. This 2D platform game caught some attention when it first came out. I remember it was included in Game Pass for a while. If you are thinking about getting a physical copy, importing it right now is actually cheaper than getting one from Limited Run. 
Next up is Stride Out 2, a horror game from Indonesia, developed by Digital Happiness. It uses a third-person perspective similar to the Fatal Friends series, which I also imported last year. I'm always into horror games from Southeast Asia. They have got this mysterious vibe that really grabs my attention. This kind of game isn't commonly seen in the North American market, therefore I decided to import it. After talking about an Indonesian horror game, let's dive into a Taiwanese horror game, The Bridge Curse Road to Salvation. This game is based on a film, and guess what? The film is based on a college horror story. Fun fact, I actually visited that college back in high school. Speaking of horror experiences, the night before we visited, we stayed in a hotel that was more ghostly than our campus tour. I didn't encounter any ghosts, but I must have looked like one the next morning because I barely sleep that night. Anyway, because of this experience, the bridge curse definitely caught my interest. By the way, the game is published by East Asia Soft. I was totally surprised to spot their games in the store. We have another horror game from East Asia Soft. Since it's midnight, it came with a bonus sticker, which was a nice surprise. The best way to describe this game is like when Fatal Friend has a child with Resident Evil. I don't think the series caught a lot of attention, but when I found it while browsing the PS5 station, it caught my eye. It looks like a quick play now, so I decided to give it a try. Alright, after three horror games in a row, let's look into something different now. This is the last PS5 game, and boy, it's also the most expensive one. The title is a little bit long. Infinity Stretch, Dragon Quest, The Adventure of Die. It's based on the anime series with the same name. From what I've heard, this game has gotten a lot of negative reviews. Some players think it's kind of a health-backed project. But you know what? I'm still curious to give it a shot because the combat system looks pretty interesting. Uh, by the way, this is a launch edition, so it comes with some additional DLC. Originally, I was looking for a PS4 edition because of the free PS5 upgrade. Turns out, Japan is the only region that got a PS4 physical release. Next up, we have a couple of games from Saga franchise. Saga Frontier Remastered and the Romancing Saga Minstrel Song. Oh, and let's not forget about Romancing Saga 3 from last year, and it's still sealed. I'm on a mission to collect the whole series on PS4, however, I'm not sure if I will be able to check down Romancing Saga 2 and the Saga Scarlet Grace editions. They are kinda old, so finding them in stores might be a bit tricky these days. Next up is Tatsumachi Behind the Twilight. Another game I was searching for last year without much success. I asked the store and they mentioned they had it in another store, so they could help me get it. I really like the art style and the setup of this action adventure game, so I was pretty happy to finally get my hands on it. And guess what? It even came with a bonus art book. It's kind of surprising that a launch bonus is still available since this game has been out for a while now. You know what? Now is the perfect time to talk about the issue I brought up at the start of the video. Did you guys spot something out about these four games? They have one thing in common. Some fade covers. River City Saga and the Romancing Saga show minor sound fading. You can see it in the rating icons. They are not as bright as usual. Tatsumachi has severe sound fading. The blue bar at the top left is way lighter than normal. It's like there is a filter applied to the cover image. And uh, same thing to the Ultra Edge, the side has severe sound fading. This is actually my first time getting games with sound fading covers. This normally happens when store display games close to windows. I remember GameStop near my office had this issue before. If you are thinking about importing games, especially older ones, keep an eye out for sound fading. You don't want to drop a cache on a game only to find it's not in perfect shape, right? We have just crossed the halfway mark. The next six games actually have a physical release in North America. 
However, I still decided to import Lin for a few different reasons. Let's take a look and I will explain why I made a later choice. Little which Nobita has always been on my radar. Last fall, I decided to pull the trigger, but it was sold out almost everywhere. Still, I managed to find a couple of places that had it. Although they were asking for $55 to $60, I know this is a low print game, but it's kind of overpriced if you ask me. Luckily, the store I went to gave me a decent discount, so I snagged it for a little bit over $30. Plus, it came with additional goodies. Little Witch Nobita is an action shooter made by a Taiwanese developer, Pupuya Games. The game received mixed review in Asia, but it didn't catch a lot of attention in the Western market. Next up, we have got two games from Utah Wari Rumono franchise, Prelude to the Fallen and the Zen. Zen sold out a while back, so the only way to get it at a reasonable price is by importing it. As for Prelude to the Fallen, it was still available from the publisher last December, but they were asking for $60. I managed to snag it for less than $30, which shows a pretty big price difference. I already own the other two games from the series, and my goal is to complete the entire series. Now the big question is when I will actually start playing them. I cannot even count how many times I have picked up the game and then put it back down right away. Games like this demand a lot of time. So be prepared to set aside dedicated hours for full enjoyment. I might kick things off with Prelude to the Fallen sometime later this year. I managed to save some money by importing those three games myself, but here is the kicker. When traveling by flight, there are back limitations, and those games took up some spaces. I could have used that space for games that are not even available in the US. Honestly, there are a couple of games I had to skip this time because of space issue. Moving forward, I might just purchase those kind of games in the States, even if it means paying a higher price. The next game was actually a gift from a store promotion event. Since I spent quite a bit there, they decided to give me a copy of Sakura Wars. I already have this game, and it was even on my list of 10 PS4 games I must play in 2023. Therefore, when I got it, I was like, man, I just finished this one. But hey, free is free, right? Plus, since it's the traditional Chinese edition, I wondered if there might be a separate trophy list. However, it turns out that all regions share the same trophy list. Overall, it's a pretty good surprise. I didn't expect them to give a brand new game. The next two games had a physical release in North America by Limited Run. Once again, Limited Run's physical release is equivalent to no physical release. First up is a side-scrolling action-adventure game, RWBOI Aerofield, which is based on the anime series. I heard it's quite challenging, which is why I didn't plan to get it initially. During my last visit to the store, I spotted it on the shelf and the price looked reasonable, so I thought why not. Especially since there is a free PS5 upgrade. Next up is Ultra Age, an action adventure game developed by the Korean developer Next Stage. The gameplay gives me vibes of Near Automata, which is pretty cool. It seems like an interesting game overall, but I have heard that the story is a bit plain. Uh, let me do a quick check. Alright, we have got three more games and one more gift left to cover. I personally think the next one is the rare skin I got this time. It's a Switch game, Behind the Screen, and the Defoliation Bundle. Both games were developed by Taiwanese developers. I have heard some talk about Behind the Screen for years now. It received generally positive reviews. This game is full of the culture vibes of early Taiwan. It's like taking a step back into 1980s. This bundle itself was not expensive. But the store gave me a heads up that their stock was running low. Therefore, there was a chance they might not be able to snag a copy for me. Luckily, they were still able to find one from another store. This is the only Switch game I purchased this time. While there are plenty of other Switch games I could import, 
my focus is mainly on PlayStation for now. Next up is Tales of the Neon Sea. When I was browsing for some PS4 games, I found this adventure puzzle game. It's developed by a Chinese studio, Pong Pioneer. The game is set in a cyberpunk world and is best known for its stunning visuals. The beautiful 8-bit art style totally grabbed my attention. Before we dive into the last game, let's talk about another gift I got. This is an official licensed PlayStation notebook. It comes in four different color sets, and mine is in blue and red. I've never seen this in the States. They probably go for around $2. A bit pricey for something so small. Thanks to the store for giving me this notebook. I really appreciate it. Definitely gonna swim by there again next winter. Finally, we have got Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, a remaster of a Nintendo DS game from the 2010s. I missed out on playing it back then because I never had a DS. I remember it got tons of press back in the day, so a lot of folks are pumped for this remaster. Uh, by the way, this launch edition comes with two BGN and four backgrounds. Alright, those are all the games I imported this winter. I ended up with a total of 20 games plus a free game. Gotta admit, it's a little bit too many. I will probably limit it to 15 in the future. Just to clarify, it sounds like I physically visited the store since I used first person perspective in the entire video. Uh, I actually didn't. My family did and uh, we communicated via video call. You could say I virtually visited the store. One thing I noticed is that Taiwanese video game stores remind me of how things used to be here before 2020. Not sure if you are aware, but most major retailers in the US no longer offer a wide selection of games in store. I really miss those good old days when you could find deals or treasures at the store. Well, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed today's content, be sure to hit that subscribe button below. Take care and I will see you soon.